Hello, my name is Mark Williams, and today I'm joined by Michael Sorensen and Josh Weeks. We are students at the SMU Guildhall Game Development School, and we are going to talk to you today about lighting and UDK. We are using UDK version 7637, and let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is talk to you about the different types of lights and how you're going to find them. So, um, why don't you mouse right over here in UDK? and that opens up the content browser. Next we'll hit the actor class tab and then we see that there is a topic named lights and then we'll click on that. Alright so here are your four basic types of lights and I'm going to go over them real fast and go into detail on their different properties later. First we have directional lights. You can think of them as the sun. They will light up an area evenly with parallel shafts of light. So if you have it pointing at a floor, it'll light the, all floors evenly throughout your level. Uh, next we have point lights. They're the bread and butter of the lighting world in UDK. They are like light bulbs and a lamp or street lights and things like that. Next we have skylights. They're like a legacy light. Uh, it is not recommended to use them because of the light mass properties of the other lights. They can do the job of the skylight uh, better and more efficiently. So we'll go over them, but you're not going to use them. Last we have spotlights, which literally just put a spot of light on the ground. They're pretty simple. You'll notice that there's these four other lights. They're the pickup lights. These are also a legacy light for if you were making an Unreal Tournament map, uh, you, you would need to put lights in the pickup in the game, like for ammo and weapons, but in UDK you're not going to be using those. But they're there, but they're really specialized lights, so you don't really need them. Next, uh, I'm going to tell you what these letters on these lights mean, and what these different shapes mean. So first, we have your st static light. And static lights only affect uh, static objects and mobile objects like this block here and this weird tentacly thing here. Next we have dynamic static lights uh, which only affect uh, other dynamic lights and such. And finally we have user defined lights and uh, the user defines them as they please. Uh, next um, you'll see that this light bulb here has this little chain here and that signifies that it is a toggleable light which means it can flash on and off uh, which depending on the type of light uh, will kind of determine what you would do with it and this one with the weird shadow images means that it's a movable light and again that def kind of depends on what you would do with it so let us go over to the lights so I can show you exactly how they work First we have this wonderful directional light and if you were to press F4 like I'm about ready to do it brings up all the options for your light so there's a couple that are pretty important right now enabled is turn off because it would kind of cover up the other lights that we're going to display so we turn it off so we're going to turn it on and you'll see that since it's pointing directly down it is lighting all these planes evenly even all the way over here. Though so it's a little washed out because the other light's over there. Now if I were to click the rotate tool and move it to here, you'll see that it's lighting everything evenly that it touches. I mean there's splash over and stuff like that. That's like the light mass and the ambient stuff. But it will evenly light whatever surface it's pointing at. Now if you're not a fan of this pink color that I decided for, you can click on this pink bar and change the color. So we can change it to a nice eerie blue, to green, yellow, orange, or back to pink. And then you press OK and it changes the color. Now if we go back into actor classes, and you go to directional lights, you'll see that there's four different types of directional lights. Right now we're just using the regular directional light. There's also the toggleable, which if you were to have um, 
a thunderstorm, you could have it be flashing on and off. So if it, that light could be coming through a window and lighting everything like it's a thunderstorm. Then we would we also have a dominant directional light, which makes for dynamic sh uh, shadows. So if you have like this grate and you wanted to have a great shadow on the surface beneath it, uh, you would use a dominant light. But it is key to note that you should only have one dominant lighting light shining on a scene or an object at a time because if two are to mix, it'll mess up your lighting, like lights will disappear or make things look funny. And then finally we have a dominant directional light movable, which has the same properties of a dominant light, but that is now movable. So if you wanted to have, let's say, a sunrise or sunset, that's what you would use that for. So we're going to close that and for now, and we'll close the light proper properties for this after we turn it back off so I can show you the other lights. And we'll close that. And the next light we have is your point light, which, as I mentioned earlier, was your bread and butter. So you click on that, and you can see how big its radius is right now. And it's lighting up all this and leaving a shadow, and it's going over here. And if you want to change its radius, an easy way to do that is by going up here to Scaling Model, and you click that, and you can bring it in. And you'll see that it's not lighting very much. And now when I bring it back out, it's going to light everything up. So that's how you do that. Same properties as before. We can change the light color like that. And we can change the brightness right here. The thing to note about using the slider like this instead of typing in a number is that it uses your undo queue, which basically means every time you do something, it goes into your queue. So you can control Z to undo it an X number of times. So every time that you adjust the slider, it is using up that queue. So that's something to be wary of. And uh, again, there's different types of point lights. So there's the dominant point light, which works as like a dominal, dominant directional light, but in a more enclosed space. Point light is your regular point light. Point light movable. So you can have, you could put it on an object to move the light around or just move around in general. So you could put it like in a car as like a dome light. So when the car is moving, the dome light would move with the car. And then we have point light toggable, which can have it turn it on. So like you have your lamp and you can have it flashing on and off because it's on the fritz or you can have someone press a switch and it turns on or off. But that is done with Kismet and Matinee and we will not be going over that in this tutorial. Next we have the skylight which again no one recommends using because they're outdated and with light mass which is something else I'll be covering in just a few moments. So you'll notice that the icon's pretty big so if you were to go down to your display down here, you'll notice something called draw scale. And if you were to type in a number, it makes that icon bigger or smaller. And again, a skylight is ambient light. So let's see what happens if we turn off the ambient light. You'll notice that everything gets kind of dark and everything. But with the way the light mass is, this point light is actually seems to be lighting up more than when we turn on the sky, the uh, skylight. The skylight seems to be washing out a lot of things and messing with things. So skylight's just not so good. There's a couple different types of skylights. There's skylight and there's skylight toggable. So your ambient light could be coming on and off and looking kind of weird, but you're not going to be using it. So who cares?